Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new micro brush quadcopter from Makerfire, the Armor 80 Pro. The Armor 80 Pro is the bigger brother of the Armor 65 Plus, which I've already reviewed. This is an excellent macro brush quadcopter, but one of the things that I missed about it is the on-screen display, which is luckily now featured on the Armor 80 Pro. So let's start by opening the box and see everything we're getting inside. Inside the box, first of all, we get in the quadcopter itself. You can see it's a pretty big micro brushed quadcopter. We get in a 1S 600mAh LiPo battery. It's a regular LiPo battery, not an HB one. And on the bottom of the package, we get in lots of spare propellers. These are 40mm propellers. We get in the instructions manual. And we also get in this USB charger, which is capable of charging both regular and HV batteries, and it has 1.25 and 2mm connectors. So as you can see, the Armo 80 Pro is a pretty big micro brushed quadcopter. You can see how it compares next to the 65 Plus. The weight of the Armo 80 Pro is 38.2 grams without the battery, and after adding the included 600mAh LiPo battery, the weight is 52.6 grams, so it's much heavier than the 65 Plus, which weighs 26.4 grams without the battery, and 32.2 grams including it. The Armo 80 Pro features 80-20 brushed motors, which are connected to these 40mm propellers. The camera is an 800 TV line, 25mW, 40 channels, all-in-one camera. Changing the channel and the band is done through this button over here. Short pressing it is going to change the channel and long pressing it is going to change the band. This flight controller has a built-in Afrosky D8 receiver. As far as I know, this is the only available option. In order to bind it, you will have to put your transmitter on D8 mode, channels 1 to 8, hit bind, and then power on the Armor 80 Pro while pressing this button over here. You can either power it on using the battery or the micro USB connector. Unfortunately, there is no RSSI feedback, so in order to make sure that the bound procedure was successful, connect it to beta flight and see if the sticks are responding properly. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over beta flight settings, then take it outdoors for a test flight, and I'll see you in a bit in order to give you my conclusion. As you could see at first, the video was very blurry. It happened because the camera was out of focus. In order to fix it, I had to remove the canopy, then remove the hot glue that was added to the camera by Makerfire. I regained the focus and then put back some hot glue. I told Makerfire about this issue and hopefully it's not going to happen to you. But if it does, just repeat the step that I just described and be careful with this camera. For example, after I fixed it, you can see that now I can't see any longer the channel and band indication. I'm not sure what happened, but this camera is very fragile. So be careful when dealing with it. 
Another issue that I had is that the propellers keep popping up even though they seem very secure maybe because this motor is pretty powerful they just kept popping up. So what I recommend to do is to put a little bit of super glue and then connect it to the motor shaft. Just be careful not to get the super glue on the motor itself. So I recommend to put just a little bit and then push it, hold it like that for about 20 seconds and then it's going to make sure that the propeller is going to be better secured. As for its range, I was pretty much limited by the VTX of this camera. I could get only to 30 meters or so, which is a pretty short range. For example, with the 65 Pro, I could get much farther. This was limited also by the VTX because this one is using the XM receiver, which will enable you to get to hundreds of meters without any issues. But I could get to more than 30 meters. I'm not sure why. Maybe my VTX is defective, maybe not. But it's something that you have to take into consideration. So overall, I liked two things about the Armo 80 Pro. First of all, it's pretty fast, and second of all, it features Betaflight OSD. Besides that, I think that the Armo 65 Plus is a better quadcopter, it has a better camera, the flight time you're going to get are better than the 80 Pro. I got only about a minute and a half of flight times using the 600mAh LiPo battery, which leads me to another point. This battery bay is pretty big and it's going to be a problem for you to find batteries that are going to fit this bay. This 600mAh LiPo battery's size is not very common, so it's going to be a problem for you to find similar batteries. In addition, in terms of durability, the 65 Plus is more durable, I think it has a more flexible frame. I crashed the 80 Pro just a few times and the crashes were pretty minor and still after about 5 flights you can see that this part is already broken. So if you're debating which version to get, I suggest go with the Armor 65 Plus. I really wish that Makerfile are going to release in the future an Armor 65 Plus version that has Betaflight OSD and it's going to make it probably one of the best micro brushed quadcopters in the market. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about these quadcopters, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.